Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and it's time to build a new computer not because I wanted to, because I had to my trusty machine that was nearly nine year old finally give up but before we start don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me coffee, have a look at my website and let's get started so here we have a Gigabyte X870 Gaming X Wi-Fi 7 for the AMD AM5 platform. So this board has got all the creature comforts you would expect from a um, medium to top end board. We've got three M.2 slots, PCIe 5, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, um, Ethernet, USB-C's, DDR5 support, basically all the good creature comforts you expect and there's a chip we will be using a Ryzen 9 9900X obviously AM5 12 core 24 thread so this thing should motor quite nicely and for the primary drive we have this crucial P510 one terabyte and the read and write speeds on this are quite quite fast so we will be using that and for our memory we'll be using DDR5 5600 as you can see there Corsair memory I'm actually going to upgrade this to 64 later on but for this video we'll just be putting 32 in and for the heatsink compound we're going to use some Arctic MX4 which has always been okay with me so let's have a look inside the box see what goodies we get inside the box and there's our motherboard and it's anti-static uh, bag now with all the metal work on this motherboard it does feel quite heavy it gives it a um, a sense of quality so yeah all very nice very nice indeed and let's have a look at the accessories so we have the Wi-Fi 7 antenna a couple of little books SATA cables and these are supports for the SSDs and we've got a connector alignment tool if your front panel connectors are not in one block and are all separate cables luckily mine are all in one block so we won't be needing this but we will need those ssd support blocks later on when we install the ssds so let's open the bag and have a first glance at this motherboard so yeah it's looking all very nice some nice graphics and artwork on the board let's get it out of the bag and yeah looks very good i've always been happy with gigabyte boards so that's what led me to buy this one i had to kind of buy it in a bit of a rush now one thing i do like about this board is this um release mechanism for the pcie slot whereas normally you'd have to put your finger in and try and get that lever down but now you can just push the button and it releases the card so if you've got a really long graphics card then this makes it easier for removal instead of having to fight and release that clip so gigabyte have made it really easy to get this plate off which reveals the three m.2 nvme slots and they've all got a quick release mechanism on them so no more screws no more fiddling about with screws if you want to install one or remove one you just basically turn the latch and yeah remove or install your drive so first thing we're going to install the cpu whilst it's on the bench get that out of the way because Whereas the AM4 was a P5 
pin grid array, meaning the pins were on the chip. This one uses a landing grid array where the pins are on the actual motherboard and they are very easy to damage. So we're going to take our utmost care whilst installing this. So careful, carefully releasing the latch exposes our landing grid array. And yeah, those pins are very, very tiny. And if they get bent, it's not good. It's not good at all. So we carefully take our chip out of its protective plastic. There it is. Ryzen 9 9900X. We've got two alignment slots. And obviously we've got a triangle that goes to the top corner as shown. Now the way they say this is just close it, close the, la close the latch and the plastic cover should come off. Which I'm sure it does, but it felt a little bit tight to me. So I'm going to remove the plastic cover manually. I think I've seen plenty of videos where you just close it and this just pops off manually. There it is. So we will, we will close the close the mechanism that holds the CPU in place. And there we have it. Very nice. And there's our chip installed in its socket. Looking very nice. So we're going to put this away and we'll put the sticker on the computer later on once I find somewhere to put it. So next we're going to install the memory. So I'm only installing two sticks at the moment. So it says there A2 and B2 must be populated first for a two channel memory. If you're putting one slot in, then I believe it's just the A2 slot. But you should always put a pair of matched memory in here. You shouldn't really mix timings and memory. So I decided to buy another set of this memory whilst it was still being sold. So I've got, well, so I will have four matching um, uh, for matching modules. As you can see, the, the plastic cover wasn't stuck out very well on that one, but we'll take it out the, take it out the container anyway. Now you can see I've released the clip on the right hand side. Now these memories modules will only fit in one way. So you can see that this slot lines up with the slot in the actual SIM slot. And we turn it around that way and it does not line up there. So that will be, that will be the way that it lines up. And they've made it nice and easy. You just drop it in, give it a nice firm push. The latch latches on the right hand side. And there's our memory installed. So yeah, just a firm push down and it will go into place. And there's a close up of the alignment slot. So as you can see, if we put the memory in the wrong way around, the alignment slot does not match. We put it in the correct way and the alignment slot matches. So to install it, nice firm press and click and it's in place and the latches have clipped over and yeah there's our memory installed now I'm going to be using the only one cooler that I had out of my old system so I believe I need to add standoffs to this so what I'm doing is I'm just removing the original 
AM5 um, retention bracket for the fan and we're going to fit our standoffs now the uh, all-in-one cooler I got for the old system was a be quiet um, pure loop so I believe when I installed this I needed to fit these standoffs and then put the retention brackets back on which were these special ones so I'm going to put these into place and then I'm going to do a test fit obviously if you're buying a new system with a new cooler follow the instructions for the correct mounting hardware and all should be good I'm only being extra cautious because I took this off my AM4 system and I just wanted to make sure that the actual contact between the, uh, the cooler and the chip was proper and I hadn't mislaid any important um, hardware so we've screwed that into place and now we will see if the if the actual cooler fits but what I want to do is I want to put a temporary tiny little spot of thermal compound in the middle and this will tell me if it's made contact and if it's made good good contact so this is only a temporary measure so as you can see there's the um, there's the be quiet cooler with its pipes coming off it now that this is only temporary I will be taking it back off again but instead of wrestling with this in the system trying to check for if it works properly we do it on the desk and then we can be sure when we finally build it that all will be good so I've tightened it down by gently doing each side a few turns and then going back to the other side not just doing one side at once we take it down gradually as to get an even pressure so I'm just doing it bit by bit until the screws stopped turning which should be then at the end of its travel and it feels nice and secure so now we'll take it all back off again and we'll see if that thermal paste has done its job basically so again I'm taking it off in a nice stage like I say if this is a new system you don't have to worry about this step as you can see from a tiny little spot of thermal compound in the middle we covered quite a large area of the chip so anyway I'm going to clean that off I'm quite happy that the contact between the cooler and the chip is absolutely perfect so I've just used a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a cloth and we've cleaned that off now to install temporarily the primary SSD it's not going to be its permanent home just yet but this is how it will go so here's our nice new shiny SSD when I can finally get into the box and this thing should be really really quick And there it is crucial p510 one terabyte absolutely this thing is is fast so i'm not using those small standoffs that were in the box just yet because i want to make sure that everything in the system works properly and I do actually have to try and get some stuff off my old drive 
so I will be switching in my old drive later on to recover uh, some data but for the moment this is how the SSD is installed with this nice easy latch just clicks it into place dead easy no screws no fiddling about and there it is and then obviously you would install this plate removing the uh, plastic on the heat transfer material and then putting this down and then that will then give a good heat sink for the um for the drives and again nice and easy to fit gigabyte have done a nice job making this um making this nice and easy so we're going to be using this mx4 thermal compound but not just yet because fitting in the all-in-one cooler will have to be one of the last jobs we do because if we fit this first inside the case we're not going to be able to get to the cables at the top so that's the first part of our new system with its funky little release mechanism for the PCIe device that would sit there mainly your graphics card so that's it for this video stay tuned for part two where we finish the machine off put it inside the case hopefully it powers on switches on we'll do a bias update and all should be good anyway if you like this video don't forget to like share subscribe comment on facebook join patreon buy me coffee have a look at my website microchips.net thanks for watching and we'll see you in part two